Hello, hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to my living room. For those of you who don't know me, I am Kaylee O'Keefe, and I am the founder of Soul Excellence Publishing, the nation's number one multi-author leadership book publisher. And over the last two years, I've been able to work with the great fortune uh, with over 300 business leaders in 12 countries on four different continents to come together to share their wisdom in best-selling books. Books like Leading Through the Pandemic, Significant Women, Black Utah, STEM Century, Greener Data, the list goes on, and I feel super privileged to have had the opportunity to connect with so many brilliant individuals with such big hearts who've chosen to show up, share their truth, and also provide insight on how to do the inner work that enables so many of us to flourish in times that are so fast, so unknown, or with so much uncertainty, and it's, it's just a really privileged position to have the opportunity to do that. Now, it wasn't always that way. I spent the first eight years of my career in corporate consulting, working for CEB, now Gartner, in Washington, D.C., and then I moved out to San Francisco, worked in tech for three years, like got my hands dirty in the startup world, building out customer success teams, loving it. And this, for me, soul excellence, has been a journey over the last two years to follow my own intuition, my own wisdom, my own sense for what am I really here for? And so I, I pulled the anomaly, as my friend Claudia would say, and I jumped off a very fast track uh, to the top at a really incredible tech company. And the reason why I did that is because I felt deeply in my soul that one of my best gifts was to express, to share from the heart, to connect with people, and also to spark movements based on ideas. Like everything starts with a thought or an idea and then trickles down into a business, into a way of being, into a family structure, into the material things that we see here in the world. And so I knew for me that it just made so much sense to write, to express, and then ultimately to help other leaders to do the same, to publish their books, to publish their stories. And so here we are two and a half years later um, doing just that. But that's not why I came on <laughs> to share this afternoon. I wanted to share kind of a series of an events, series of events that happened today that really got me thinking even more deeply about this mission about this mission for a more free and flourishing society and doing it by actually allowing people to heal from within through writing their stories. So here's what happened today. <laughs> this morning, I woke up and for the first time in maybe a year, I decided to just go on an early morning walk. Like I did my early morning routine, decided to go on a walk, um, before working out. And so I went into my drawer and I pulled out a Duke t-shirt. Uh, I went to Duke for undergrad uh, and studied international studies and Spanish. So I, I pulled out the t-shirt, you know, it's faded. It's not exactly from when I went to college. It's a recent update, but I threw it on. And then I also decided to take some coffee with me. And so I pulled out a Duke national championship tumbler, poured in my pumpkin spice coffee and off I went. And I felt it was odd because this is not a normal pattern of mine to, to wear this shirt, to now be like ultra team <laughs> right now, to walk at that time of the day. And so I walked and I just thought like, huh, this is interesting. So much so that I took a picture, shared it on Instagram and said, woke up feeling like a blue devil. Subconsciously, what could be happening is the fact that the Duke football team is actually crushing it this year, which... I'm always extra proud of because during my four years at Duke, I worked in the sports promotions department, which meant I worked at every single football game, like blowing up the kids zone inflatables, finding the fan of the game, taking advantage of some really good Southern food in the press box when we had a break. But during that era here, I'll give you the era 2004 to 2008. Uh, I don't know if we won more than two home games all four years. So I get especially excited when I see Duke football doing really well. So keep it up, guys. So I'm on this walk kind of surveying the tropical storm, Nicole Damage. I live here in Fort Lauderdale, a little bit of flooding, largely due to the tide. 
And as I'm walking, I suddenly thought of J.D. Vance. Now, not a totally random thought. J.D. Vance did just win his election to be a senator for Ohio. And I started thinking about him. And I specifically started thinking, of course, about his book and the subsequent movie, Hillbilly Elegy. Hillbilly Elegy, the book and movie, resonated with me so, so deeply. I especially love the movie because Amy Adams is in it, um, plays JD's mom, and Glenn Close, Glenn Close uh, plays his grandma, so just an all-star cast. And uh, <laughs> I say it resonated with me, and it, it may sound funny because his childhood and mine, completely opposite. So if you know the story or even just can hear the title, if you know about J.D. Vance, uh, grew up uh, really with a difficult childhood with a mom who was addicted, um, you know, and he's trying to work his way out. And my childhood was truly beautiful with two loving parents, three wonderful siblings, sports, clubs, extracurriculars, like ritual, routine, church, everything that you could want as a child, I think, growing up. So our backgrounds are totally different, but I love a good underdog story, don't we all? And more importantly, what I've really seen in the, the character of J.D. Vance and now the leader of J.D. Vance is this, he and I shared what I would say is um, the lifting of the veil within elite institutions. So JD goes on to Yale Law School. Uh, I went to Duke undergrad. And for me, that was a moment of like, whoa, things are not what I thought they were. Now, some of this is for the good, some openness, some awareness of things outside of your local community or your family. But for the most part, I would say, you know, it was a bit of a lifting of the veil in terms of I suddenly felt a little bit lost of like, who am I? What are my values? How do I stay true to them? And since that time, what I've really witnessed is that Duke and other institutions like it have really, um, I think, shown to me that their values are very different from mine, that I thought I was rah-rah team, <laughs> like I dressed up as this morning. But when I started to say, well, I stand for excellence, I stand for truth, I stand for wisdom, I stand for joy, I stand for tolerance, I had to look and say, huh. Do these institutions represent, represent that anymore? Do the leaders of those institutions represent that anymore? So I'm on my walk, thinking of J.D. Vance, thinking of Hillbilly Elegy. And then, of course, you won't be surprised here, since this is the not the first time that I've thought about this topic, I remembered that a year, year and a half ago, I know it doesn't seem that long, but as a publisher, you can imagine I write a lot. But I remember that I wrote about exactly this in a book called The Younger Self Letters. And I wanted to share it with you and put forth sort of my version of what it means to be a member of the new elites. And I'm going to talk a little bit. I came across another brainstorm that I wrote. So I'm just going to pull together things that I've reflected on and share them with you here with my voice. And I want to put forth this, this vision because I know that there are many leaders like JD, like myself, who are high competence, high compassion, high curiosity individuals that are feeling very betrayed in a sense by the organizations that they were a part of, that they joined, that they stood for when they see those organizations and those leaders not living up to those values. So the book is The Younger Self Letters. And the premise, as you might expect, was each of us wrote a chapter to our younger selves. So I wrote to myself at age 28, uh, and I think I wrote it at the time I was 34. I won't share the whole thing, just the paragraph that's relevant to this discussion of who are our elites. And you probably are one. If you're watching this, if you're here on LinkedIn, you're an elite leader in your sphere, does this resonate with you? So I, I gave my, I told myself six important lessons. This was one, two, three. This was the fourth lesson. Whew. Wow. <clears throat> okay. 
the fourth lesson I had for my younger self was share a message of expansion for all and spark the new elites. <laughs> I write to myself, remember how you started only reading the New York Times and listening to NPR religiously on your long Sunday strolls through the National Mall when you graduated college and moved to DC. Oh yeah, you had begun to adopt the behaviors of the coastal elites of your new university credentialed class. I didn't know this was happening at the time, right? I was, that's what you did. <clears throat> what you and I failed to realize then, but know now, is that the values this particular class advocates for are misaligned to yours. In 2021, when J.D. Vance, author of Hillbilly Elegy, calls upon college-educated elites to become a traitor to your class, you will smile and say, oh yeah, I already have. You will commit to seeing individuals through God goggles and share the message of individual freedom and responsibility as solutions to the problems of expanded state control and corporate censorship. You will become a leader among the new elites that travel the spiritual path of individual expansion. Hmm. The lessons go on to say, hold high to your personal standards and your voice is your superpower. What does it mean to you to be a member of the new elites? What does elite look like in our society today? What are the behaviors of elites? What are the ideas, the experiences, the goals, the dreams? Are they different than what they used to be? Is there a new generation of leaders rising up that are conscious, that are connected, that are creative, that seek the inner way to achieve results in the world? This is my question. <laughs> this is my thesis. This is my belief that that is what's happening. So traveling the spiritual path of individual expansion. So this is all fresh. I just, I mean, this all sort of just hit me right before coming on of like, oh, do t-shirt, thinking of Hillbilly Elegy. Oh my gosh, I wrote something. So I wanted to share one more thing with you and, and invite you into this conversation because it's not one of duality. It's not one of politics. It's not one of left versus right, right versus wrong. It's none of that. It's about how do we come back to who we are as individuals, love and accept all parts of ourselves, and express from that place, connect from that place, love from that place, write from that place, speak new movements into existence from that place. So um, it looks like in March of this year, uh, I wrote this. I believe we are in need of a cultural and leadership renaissance that values freedom, integrity, liberty, open-mindedness, and joy. And I want to be a leader who brings other leaders together to turn our sparks into wildfire by sharing our stories, amplifying our platforms, and showing the way forward. Whew, gosh. Um, <laughs> this is good. Okay. Are you ready for this part? Whew. It seems to me that American elites, the individuals that occupy positions of power in government, in business, in media, entertainment, even sports, are morally bankrupt. And it's evidenced by the policies that they support, the companies and countries they do business with, and the overall decay we see in American life right now. These individuals are highly educated. They are highly connected. But they are not impeccable with their word. They do take things personally. They do make assumptions. And oftentimes, they don't seem to try their very best. Those of you who are in this space will know what I just referenced. We'll come back to it. 
And maybe it wouldn't matter if these elites were corrupt if their actions and decisions did not have consequences for the American people and those around the world, but they do. And so this issue must be addressed urgently. Okay. Here's what I think it means to be a new elite. I wrote down some words. This is a work in progress. It's something that, you know, over the next year or so, I'll have to massage as I test, as I learn, as I connect with you, especially on this vision for allowing ourselves to fully be seen. And I don't mean by the world just yet. I mean, can you see yourself fully? Maybe beyond the accolades, beyond the achievements, beyond just the outer to how you've grown emotionally, energetically, spiritually, etc. So I believe that the new elites are leaders. And when I say leader, I don't actually mean they're in a specific position of power. I mean, when they walk into a room, you sense their presence because they are there showing up ready to be, to follow, to lead, to do whatever the situation is required of them. So I believe they are practitioners of the four agreements. This is just a staple if you're in this world. And I referenced it earlier, the four agreements. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take things personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. So the new elites, this is their credo. This is how they live. The new elites are also spiritually grounded. I don't mean that they are the best meditators or the most religious, I mean that they understand we are all universally connected. As I've been learning more and more in empath leader training, I am you and you are me. This is how we take another's interest to heart. Okay, these leaders also seek truth with an open mind. This means curiosity. This means questions. This means choosing to not jump in and take the bait in every single conversation, but to pause, ask, learn, and then choose to respond, to engage, to not respond. How much of our world right now do we see is run by elites, by leaders who can't pause, who are always reacting? This is not leadership for the new world. Okay. How do you know if you're an elite <laughs> or one of the new elites, as I call it? We're going to get a better name for this. Don't worry. Well, I believe the new elites know their personal values, what they stand for, and they filter decisions through those values. So you have to say, if I value authenticity, if I value honesty, if I value connection, that influences how you show up in the world. And it's so hard today to not be at the mercy of everything that's going on in the physical world and the digital world. And so the new elites are really, really good at coming back to say, okay, what is best for me? Yes, you can take in inputs from, from doctors, from officials, from whomever, <clears throat> from family members, but you have to come back to your values. What are you here for? What is right for you? All right, and I fully believe that these leaders put freedom, expression, and their values over conformity, acceptance, and censorship. This is why I'm in publishing. I stand for free speech. I invite all of my authors who come from so many different backgrounds, different countries, different religions, different races, different ages, different sexes, different sexualities. Like They're all so different, but what do we have in common? We say yes to sharing our stories. Our authors say yes to being accepting of others. And when you share your story, you are sharing your slice of the truth. And we also get to learn by being exposed to ideas or th things that at first we bristle at or maybe we don't like. But this is the power of dialogue, of debate, of discussion, of loving, of sharing, of giving. This is what happens when leaders come together. All right. So let me wrap up with a few thoughts. Thank you for coming to my impromptu TED Talk about the new elites. Um, let me just break it down really easily. The new, new elites stand for freedom, virtue, creation, 
individuality, expression, faith, and curiosity. And maybe I'll save it for another time, the sort of like, what's the contrast? And what do I see so much of in the culture right now? A culture that is not very optimistic, is depressed in some ways, is sort of like, eh, I guess I'll just, well, what is it? Mm, the Nicki Minaj song, Moment for Life. I shared it with the group this week that it's like, mm, I'm just feeling it this week. I love it. It's old. I think it's from 2010. Um, but Nicki Minaj says in the song, uh, what is it? To be, I am no longer trying to survive. Da, 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 da. Okay. I can't think of it right now here on the spot, but it basically is, is like, just because you're alive does not mean that you're living. We need purpose. We need presence. We need the ability to process. And so I invite you here in the chat or message me wherever you want just to weigh in. Weigh in on this concept, especially if you, like me, went to an elite university, have a lot of credentials behind your name, got your MBA, have your PhD, are working in some of the best companies to work at in the world right now. This message really is for you. Is there a piece of you that feels as I do of like, huh, wait a second. Maybe these places don't stand for what I believe. And either I choose to stay, which is great, or I choose to do something different. And so I'll end with this, an invitation to share your story to express yourself, to share your ideas, and to do so in a safe place. And by that, I mean, with me and with Soul Excellence, a company that truly believes in allowing your beauty to be seen in the written word in a multi-author leadership book. We're recruiting right now for a new vision for DEI, that's diversity, equality, or equity. We're gonna have that conversation and inclusion and the great leadership awakening. These are obviously two important business topics right now. The one around DEI, the one around women in leadership and, and everything that's happened over the last two years. So if you are a leader, this is your invitation to show up and write. And you don't have to take a year to do it. You don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to do it. You just have to say yes follow our process, and really be guided by inspiration to write a chapter, to launch a best-selling book, and to step forward as someone who isn't afraid to be seen for their ideas. And we'll do it together in one of these books. Hi, Tamara. Great to see you. Thanks for joining. I hope you get to go back and watch. Uh, I take you on a journey of just my day and maybe the last 15 years of my life in the last 25 minutes. <laughs> Um, all right, let's end there for now. I'm Kaylee O'Keefe, founder of Soul Excellence Publishing, hopefully creator of the new elites, leaders like you and me who are on the spiritual path, but we're doing it right here in the midst of corporate, in the midst of entrepreneurship. And we start by turning within and writing, letting it out. And that's what you get to do when you show up and write in a multi-author book. So thank you for joining. I think I might do this every once in a while. It's pretty fun and uh, look forward to connecting with you in whatever way makes sense when you want. All right, have a great afternoon.